Today on Control Freaks, we put EA's Tuna Car Racer through its paces, preview the third instalment from Jack and Daxter, and we get the inside scoop on Vin Diesel's video game debut. So put down your controller, sit back, and tune in to your favourite video game show. Control Freaks! Things are definitely heating up in the next generation console race, and it's now likely that Microsoft will be the first manufacturer to release their next gen hardware with an early to mid 2005 release for Xbox 2, currently codenamed Xenon. After a few years of Xbox playing catch up with PS2, Microsoft wants to get a good head start before Sony's PS3 makes it to the market sometime in 2006. Sony's PS3 easily boasts the best specifications, but there is a good deal of speculation that the initial retail price will be high. Add to this the expected late arrival of the hardware, and it's clear why Xbox wants to hit the market as soon as possible. The end of 2005 is still mooted as the likely release date of Nintendo's fifth and latest console, and the Japanese company has announced that the new hardware will definitely be on show at next year's E3. San Francisco is to hold this year's 2004 World Cyber Games Grand Final. The competition will bring 700 champion gamers from 64 countries to compete for world titles and prize money worth $400,000. Launched in 2000, the World Cyber Games has grown to be the world's most popular festival for digital entertainment, and more than one million gamers are expected to participate in this year's online and offline events. Eight official games will be played at this year's finals, including StarCraft Brood War, Unreal Tournament 2004, Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne, Counter-Strike Condition Zero, Need for Speed Underground, and Project Gotham Racing 2. When Out 2 arrived at the Control Freak's office, we couldn't wait to crack it open and slam it in the Xbox. The anticipation was reaching fever pitch. Well, we couldn't wait. Like any game based on tricks and the like, it's a good idea to do the tutorials. If you can stand the cheesy voiceover guy long enough to get through them, you'll pick up vital tips to rack up the points. Try to jump from the sweet spots of at least six of this area's jumps. One. Two. Three. Ah, oh, four. As usual, your course options are limited until you prove yourself. There are only a couple of runs to play on. Having said that, it won't take you long to meet the early challenges and open up the game. The visuals in this title are a little disappointing. Cutscenes and mountain flybys are spectacular, but actual gameplay graphics didn't meet expectations. As for the replay mode, take a look at this. Well, we'll make no further comment. There is a level of repetition in this game, but it can't be classed as a drawback, because let's face it, we're snowboarding, downhill, doing tricks, just like the real thing. Success is dependent on familiarising yourself with the controls, allowing you to butter up and cut wicked combos without falling flat on your face, back or butt. Gameplay is solid and the controls are responsive. And if you have a competitive edge, then multiplayer will keep you satisfied. At the end of the day, the gameplay and variety of runs are this title's strong points. 
If you could graft the in-game graphics and camera angles from Transworld, it would be the only choice for snowboarding on the Xbox. Oh, that hurts! Coming up, Need for Speed goes underground and we get the pitch from the man behind the Chronicles of Riddick. I'm a control freak. Order of the Grand Council of Haven City for heinous acts and crimes against the people. You are hereby banished to the wasteland for life. May the precursors have mercy on you. Our boy here gets all mean and nasty when you piss him off. So don't piss him off. Word to the wise. I am Damus. King of Spargus. Out here, everything is either useful or dead weight. Let the games begin! This is combat to the death. Let's finish this. Uh-oh. Well, if it isn't the newbies. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you talking to him? I smell a storm coming. The battle for the city has just begun. Jack, your friends need you. The city threw me out. They can rot for all I care. I'm through saving the world. Don't you remember who you are? This dark eco freak is dangerous. Hate consumes your eyes. It will destroy you. We need to attack their hide from below. And the sewers are the only way in right now. I'd say good luck. But then luck won't help you. Someone is collecting eco crystals to power something terrible. That's right, we did. You haven't forgotten what I taught you, Jack. Dark, dirty, dangerous. I'm beginning to like this war. Jack, we're in serious trouble. The KG have a new leader. We're trying to find out who it is. You! Destroy this intruder! Go get him, heroes. The end is coming. Prepare the city. Daystar approaches. You know what it brings. I'll kill you myself. Jack? Jump! Seize them! I promise you will meet your makers. Fine. Bring them on. My feet are killing me, and I think I'm getting a hangnail. So maybe I'll just sit this one out. Samus hits a small screen in her quest to track down and defeat the life-form mimicking X-Parasite in Metroid Fusion for the GPA. With classic Metroid music and effects, the sound has surprising depth and quality for a GBA game. The 2D side-scrolling graphics are reminiscent of Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, only fine-tuned with lots of diversity in the level design. Samus's controls handle great, with notable improvements like the ability to hang from ledges, climb walls, and travel across overhead ladders. Although helpful for beginners, there's a bit too much assistance from the navigation computer, which takes away from the exploration factor in this reasonably short game. Linking up to the GameCube won't do much for Fusion players, but it does activate a new suit for Samus in Metroid Prime, plus unlocking the original Metroid game for use on the cube. Another piece of the Metroid puzzle which will have you fused to your GBA. Our score for Metroid Fusion, three and a half stars. Forget monkey business, this is monkey anarchy. Ape Escape 2 is a crazy adventure. Our little hero Simon travels through different lands in a world of challenges to net as many naughty monkeys as he can. With different tools to choose from like the stun club to the most important monkey net. You'll need to use all types of guerrilla tactics at every stage of the game. Ape Escape 2 is entertaining and challenging enough for all ages, so don't let that monkey get away from you. Three and a half stars. Sonic the Hedgehog, with all his moves and antics, has even more to battle and collect in Sonic Advance 2. The next in the crazy adventure which has the world's fastest hedgehog running, jumping and collecting as many Chaos Emeralds as possible along the way. A new friend named 
Cream the Rabbit joins Sonic to thwart the evil machines of Dr. Eggman, who's up to his old tricks again. Evade the obstacles and enemies, unlock secret areas, and uncover hidden Chaos Emeralds to transform into Super Sonic for the final battle. Another high-paced, side-scrolling action title keeping true to the original games. This is a great sequel in the Sonic lineup. The Need for Speed franchise has been a winner for EA over the years, and the next instalment of the series, Need for Speed Underground, will not disappoint. Riding off the back of a modern automotive phenomenon, import racing, made mainstream by movies like The Fast and The Furious, EA has crafted a compelling treat for today's gamers. Aimed directly at fans of arcade-style racing, Need for Speed Underground boasts some of the most impressive graphics seen today, bundled with quality sound effects and gameplay. Gamers are given a good choice of cars the moment they turn it on. A major part of this title is modifications. These cars are just begging to be modded to improve handling and performance, not to mention a funky paint job and decals. All the mods enhance your racing, even the visual ones. Using a point system similar to Project Gotham Racing, drivers accrue points for style, as well as speed on the track. Hey, loser. <laughs> All right, check it. Maybe I can help. Just you and me, one on one. Money in the bank. Let's go. You want to be the best? You got to take these boys down. If you lose, you're gone. Got it? Good. Now move it. The career mode is the staple of the game, allowing you to claw your way through the underground racing scene, accruing cash for car upgrades and mods. Come here to find the latest races. The race map will show you where all the action is. To keep things interesting, there are several race modes, including drag, circuit, and drift races. There are over 20 tracks to race, but they do look very similar. Having said that, the graphics are stunning, and although the visuals can be a little bit over the top at times, the gameplay graphical quality is surpassed only by Colin McRae 4 on the Xbox. Hey, what you think? You digging it? Then you gotta win. No racing grab, no cool parts. The only disappointing aspect of this title is the lack of any vehicle damage. Not even a scratch. If you are a fan of driving games, this will bug you. But probably not as much as the lack of challenges. You still have to drive, and drive well, but you won't have to struggle to get enough cash for your next mod. Beautiful, ain't it? I gave them the edge, and they blew it. You think you're better? Prove it. And maybe I'll help you out. Need for Speed Underground is a very playable, visually spectacular instalment in an ever-growing series. This game will be a staple for race fans, and in a genre that is crammed to overflowing with half-paid titles, you could do worse, a lot worse. In the Dragon Realms, all is not well. The Fallen Dragon, Red, is using the Dark Gems to poison the life of the world. Five heroes must fight the forces of evil. Spyro, Hunter, Sergeant Bird, Sparks, and the newest comrade, Blink. Now is the time. Let the battle commence.
Spyro, a hero's tale. Next on Control Freaks, Nintendo goes bongos, and it's a Black Monday for the getaways. Let's all watch a Control Freaks. Woohoo! Before PlayStation, GameCube, and Xbox, there's a whole history of console gaming. The early 90s were dominated by the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Donkey Kong Country broke new ground on a console that gamers had thought had reached its peak, with stunning visuals for its time, and a character franchise that has been a winner for Nintendo for two decades, Donkey Kong made a massive mark on a generation of gamers. And all this from a translation error. Monkey Kong, the original title, just doesn't have the same ring. Fans of Pitch Black will recognise a new title in the lineup for 2004. Time for release with the movie, The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, is a first-person prequel to the film. Welcome to Butcher Bay. Triple Max Security Prison. Toughest slam in the universe. Impossible to escape. My name is Ian Stevens. I'm a producer for Vivendi Universal Games, working on the Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay. And we're here at E3 this week, showing off the game, giving consumers and uh, retailers and the media a chance to play it. Uh, the game's done now. It'll be on store shelves June 1st, about two weeks ahead of the movie, which releases June 11th. And what it is, is a first-person shooter for the Xbox. A uh, pretty immersive hybrid game that involves some really unique key features. Uh, as a first person game we have a melee fighting system, a really simple accessible feature. Uh, take users like five seconds to figure that out. Your buddy can go to the bathroom, you can pick up the controller and you know, you're using a key feature. Uh, left hooks, right hooks, uppercuts, forward lunges and a really in-depth combo system. And then Riddick has this ability to see in the dark. So, of course, stealth is a big part of this game as well. Although, traditionally, stealth is usually about avoiding conflict and getting through areas without being seen. In the Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, stealth is more about catching guards unaware, you know, shooting out the lights, getting a dark room where guards are afraid, and looking around with flashlights. Uh, then we have action adventure elements, which really capitalize on the amount of work that the studio put in making sure that the game was a great prequel to Pitch Black and the new film. You can interact with all these different NPCs in the world, trade cigarettes or money with them for weapons or information, take on side missions. Uh, there's a lot of character development in this universe, and there's a lot of that that's done through being able to talk to virtually anyone you see. And then, of course, we have an incredible action element. A lot of weapons that we're giving players to use with a lot of technology built around that to make the environment really interactive and really reactive to anything they want to shoot at. Lots of destructible uh, entities in the environment, things you can blow up, things you can use as a gameplay mechanism, you know, shooting down ceilings uh, or fans in the ceiling to you know, drop them on enemies, uh, things like that. And of course the technology is also a big feature. Uh, at E3 for a couple of years now, people have been looking at games like Doom 3, Halo 2, Half-Life 2, and getting really excited about things like dynamic lighting and real life physics and some of the incredible detail that can be achieved through things like normal mapping and really advanced bump mapping. And we do all of that in Riddick. And it's really obvious. All the per pixel shading, dynamic lighting, normal mapping is used on every object and area and surface and character in the game. Uh, real life physics are a big part of not only the interaction but also the gameplay. And ultimately, the game is done and running at a smooth 30 frames a second. Um, and players will be able to pick this up in a couple weeks, have it, enjoy it, not have to wait like they're going to with a lot of these other, you know, big flashy games uh, that are, you know, starting to make people a little anxious. Only the one who can take out an army can break out of hell.
Hang tight, because next week on Control Freaks, it's another hair-raising ride of interactive excitement on the massive roller coaster that is computer and video games. <laughs>